Appropriate in intervals, so that will be aligned. Yep, yeah, exactly. Precisely. Mm -hmm. So that bed is, <laughs> as usual, <laughs> that, I mean, it, it is an example for so many things. But that is really what we're trying to generalize. Um, but that, that's it, yeah, the, the open, just the open intervals in a real line will do it. Now there's a theorem. Isn't that the topology then? Hmm? No, the topology on the real line, the metric topology, is the collection of all open sets. All sets for which each point in the set is interior. So open set in the real line includes such things as, say, 0, 1, union, 3 to infinity. Yeah, yeah. But any one of those things you can build from a union of those basic open sets, those those intervals. Or you could take epsilon balls. I mean, every, but that's the same answer. Epsilon balls are all intervals. Right. There's a theorem which makes this notion of basis even nicer to work with. Theorem 3.7 in Minetti. Um, the theorem is this. If <clears throat> x is a set, I mean, I guess I don't need to keep writing that. <laughs> um, B is a family of subsets of the power set. All right. Um, then you'd like to know when there exists a topology, right? For which that's the basis. Right. So then there exists a topology on X for which beta is, for which B is the basis, when, if and only if, following two conditions hold, one, we need that X is equal to the union of B, such that B is an element of that B. So this, this union, this is not a bad note. This is actually a pretty nice notation. The way I was denoting this earlier today, Jess, would be like, I think, well, like, if you're like me, most of what I struggle with to start with is really just notation. So um, in that sense, you guys are so lucky because the internet is a great place to find out questions about notation pretty fast, if you don't mind being insulted. Um, so this is the union over B and B, uh, uh, a B. <laughs> Um, yeah. So if the union of everything in B is once more the whole thing, it's got to cover the set. This is the covering condition. And what's the two? The two is for any pair, for any pair A comma B in the basis, all right, and any point. x in the intersection, right, there exists c in the basis, such that what? x is an element of c. Yeah, that's part of it. And how does c figure into a and b? The subset? Yeah. It's a subset of the intersection of A and B. Wait, so are you using that symbol um, to mean strict subset or subset? I would, in other courses, I tend to write this, but in, in this in Minetti, he just writes that if he wants to, if he wants strict subset, what he'll do is yeah, he does he does this yeah. 
this is equal to. <laughs> Sorry. No, uh, yeah, yeah, I was just Operator curious. Operator overloading. It was yeah. the same thing. In, it, uh, it allows equality. Yeah, I, I know. I, our linear algebra book, I think. Yeah, the, there the is. Thing. I think there's more disagreement on this than a lot of other things. Yeah. Um, but, so. <clears throat> the notation you're using right now in number two can include a u and b. Yeah, it does. Okay. And as you can, but as you can see internally, I'm still on this. <laughs> That is yeah. that is from me. This is from Manetti. Uh, okay, uh, I like that. Yeah, that way it just makes. We, we can sense. we can we can just stick with my default and ignore Manetti if you want. It's fine with me. Um, okay, so the proof of that. Um, I don't think I'm going to cover it at the moment. It's on page 41. What I wanted to show you is the example which is built over it. Ah, I'll do it over here. The lower lower line limit. So lower limit line, rather. So here, um, it's a set of real numbers. So I basically take x equal to the real numbers. Um, with topology, the basis, you give the basis as follows, includes, what's in the basis? Um, half open intervals. I'm sorry, I got it. Includes, so things like this, A, B, So that's the basis for for any for any a b. I assume you have to have a less than b. Otherwise, I don't think the notation makes. Well, I mean, maybe you could say if a is less than b, it's the empty set or something. I'm not sure what the convention is made in this book. So, empty set. How about the whole set? I mean, let me just be right. You just basically take the take the union over a less than b of this, right? And it's pretty clear that you get the reals. There's no point that you cannot include. I mean, pick x. Just let me be very explicit about it. Let x be a real number, right? Then. <laughs> the element of x, x plus epsilon. Uh, let me be less stupid. One there, happy. So every single real number is in one of these. So the union of all of them covers the whole, the whole real numbers. What about finite intersection? So we look at the intersection, i equals 1 to n, of let's say a sub i, b sub i, something like that, right? Oh, I don't have, I'm sorry, I'm an idiot. I'm, I'm trying to check the axioms for the topology on the basis, that doesn't make sense. We should use the theorem, right? We got the covering, we got number one. Now we got to check number two, right? What are we supposed to do? We don't have to check arbitrary. Thankfully, we don't have to check arbitrary intersections anymore. You see, that's that's why this notion of basis is amazing, is it frees us of this 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 drudgery of checking finite intersections. Instead, we can find the covering condition and check this thing on two things rather than n things. We much rather check two things than n things, right? You rather do group work with two people or n people? N equals one is good, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, let's see here. Uh, oh. So what do I need to check? I need to let. So A B 
CD elements of B, and then what? And am I supposed to take? I get, okay, so if 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 there is no point, we've we've met the condition. We can't we can't fail to meet a condition that there's nothing to meet, <laughs> right? Um, so then, suppose there is a point in the intersection, right? Then we have to find some other. Um, all right, so let's see here. What, what does this look like? So let's suppose that there is an x in the element, in, in the element of the intersection. What does that look like? I'm going to draw it somewhere. I think you guys already have the notion of finer, so I'm going to get rid of that. Let's see. So, yeah, I mean. One of these, either A or C, has to be smaller than the other. I mean, right? Let's, uh, I mean, either or they're equal. If they're equal, if A and C are equal, then we're kind of done because it's just one set. Then they overlap. I mean, if, if A and C are the same, then well, let's just put, let's suppose that A is less than or equal to C. Okay. All right. So here's A. Here's C. Now. B has to be greater than C. Right, B has to be greater than C because we assume that their intersections are not empty. It's 5 o'clock oh, PM. Oh. So that has to be B. Now, I don't know. The D on the other hand, D there's two cases for D, right? D could either be less than zero. Yeah, D could be like here or D could be there. I don't know. Right. We're not sure. So, let's see here though, the, where, where does the point in the intersection have to be? And, and oh, I have to pick, I have to do something for any point in the intersection, right? It's an intersection from C to B, or C to D. Right, so. If D is less than <coughs> B, then the intersection is just C to D. I guess it's, it's always C to D though, isn't it? Oh, you're right. It's either okay. It's either C to D or C to B. Okay. Depending on if B is less than D or if um, D is less than B. Yeah. So you pick any point, right? You pick any point, like in here. Or you pick any point in here, right? Yeah, C is kind of boring. This is going to be C, B, or C, D. Oh, we can use. <coughs> <laughs> You're right, that's funny. We don't even have to do any extra work to construct the C. C already is, in the, C already is the intersection, right? I mean, the intersection, you notice this doesn't say that the intersection of A and B has to again be something in the basis. Right, but in, this case, it is. in this case, it is, so it's even simpler. Now, this topology is actually finer than the metric topology. Do you see why? take an infinite union to construct two-sided open sets. Infinite union couldn't you? To construct two no. Or no, maybe you couldn't. I don't know. That well Well yeah I guess because it's arbitrary union, so your union would have to range over 
real numbers. Uh, yeah, he well, he says well. He does something like what you're saying. Let me write it down, and we'll talk about it. Um, I think we don't need a theorem anymore, right? He says this. He says that. I'm sorry. I have to um, do my my unfrenching. It takes me a second. Uh, <laughs> union, union over c greater than a of oh, this notation c comma. I think that might have been what you were trying to say, Nathan. Yeah. Essentially. So that shows you that the basic open sets in the met metric topology are in the topology that's generated by the lower, by these lower, these half open sets. On the other hand, there is no way. This is just this is simply not open in the metric topology, right? This is not open in the metric topology because that right there is not an interior point. You take any epsilon ball around it, you got points outside the set. Game over, not interior point. So every set which is open in the metric topology is also open in the lower limit topology, but not vice versa. Yeah. I like that. It's a good non-trivial example. So where we're going with this, guys, of course, is we want to study <coughs> this notion of open. And soon we'll be talking about functions between sets. And when do those functions preserve the topology from one set to another? If you can transport the topology from one set to another, then those, set, those different spaces are said to be homeomorphic. And such a function, uh, well, it's a little bit more than continuous, but we'll also say continuous functions. Continuous functions behave in a natural way with respect to this, you know, open sets. And, um, he has a great discussion in chapter one just about how the notion of continuity has, a no has to do with the notion of things sticking together. He uses this word adherence to talk about um, the idea of open sets, closed sets, and, 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 and the notion of a function being continuous. And I, I think it's, it's a very nice language. I, I'm not sure if it's just a non-standard translation from the Italian or if that's actually a word a lot of other people are using. I don't remember reading adherence anywhere else. I, I, I mean, it, 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 like, it just sounds like you know, in, continuity. In your, it uses the word specifically, I think, arbitrarily close. Yeah, in your, in your real analysis book, do you see it, adherence used? I don't... Um, <clears throat> I mean, I think he has a point, is adherent, or, or something that might be something like... Um, not quite a boundary point. It's kind of it's, but anyway, I will next time we meet. Um, probably won't be Friday if I had to guess. But if we do, we'll talk about more examples of topology, and we'll just keep going the way we're doing it. I, I hope you guys don't mind if I don't follow the book precisely. I'm just going to try to tell you things I know. I, w I wish I had enough time in the semester to just like digest Minetti and, and like explain it to you. But I like this. This stuff is fun. Yeah. I don't know this so anyway. Very <clears throat> button. Thank you.